Welcome to Speak Your Truth. This is your girl, Yana Positive, with another episode on the Yana Positive channel. This is Speak Your Truth, where we create an airy space of inspirational, relatable, empowering, and elevating content. For this afternoon, we have a very special guest with us. So if you're new to joining us, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Click that notification bell so you can be notified when we upload another video. This is Speak Your Truth, The Untold, where we create an Irish space. If you are returning, welcome back, family. It's good to have you here. We have our very special guest with us today. Her name is Jade. Jade, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank she you. is Jade Brooks. She is here um, to talk to us about something important, and I feel like it's going to be more like a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, Jade has her own own YouTube channel so you guys need to check it out I'll link it in the description below the modest homemaker and it has some really good videos guys you should definitely check it out do you want to tell them a little bit more about your channel so on my channel it is basically a lot of content geared towards my life as a homemaker mm -hmm. I've been a homemaker for two years now so what you see on there is just a lot of day in the life routines, cooking mm -hmm. recipes, and sometimes I have conversations on there just speaking about biblical principles and what it's like to be a woman of God. Now, I love Jade, guys, because <laughs> Jade is like what you would define as a strong black woman, mm -hmm. but at the same time, oh, she Lord. knows when to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I really like that. It's, it's kind, kind of like having a hard fruit on the outside, but soft on the inside. <laughs> and I really admire Jade as a woman of God too, very modest. Uh, what was it like, like going into that? Um, let's start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. What was it like growing up? Okay, so growing up, I grew up in a Christian household. Mm -hmm. So basically, I, I put quotations because um, my family, we grew up knowing God, mm -hmm. you know, and being raised and going to church. But to be honest, we didn't really go to church like together much. Like I can probably count on hand how much in the beginning of my life we all went to like church. When I say we, I'm talking about my mom, my brothers and my sisters. Um, my parents are not married. They've never been married. Um, so, yeah, so yeah, that just kind of, you know, mainly my life consists of just me and my brothers and sisters and my mom. And so, like I said, we didn't all go to church together as a family with my mom. She pretty much just sent us. But later on in life, when we moved from our childhood home, we started going to church together more so. And yeah, uh, that's pretty much that. I didn't really have much of a personal relationship with God as a kid I pretty much just did as I was told and just went to church and that pretty much was that I feel like later on in life that's when I pretty much got connected to God on my own oh that is <laughs> that is a story we're gonna delve into all right do you know how they say the way you're parented is the way you're partnered no I've never heard of that. <laughs> you never heard of that. <laughs> so it's from a movie. So maybe okay. it's just me. It's from um, Unprisoned on Hulu. Okay. It's like there is a direct line in the way you are parented and the way you are partnered. Mm. Um, and a lot of people struggle to find that balance between am I going back to the way I was parented mm -hmm. and allowing it to influence how I was partnered. Did you grow up with both parents in the household? No, not not as a child. My dad pretty much, would, like I said, they weren't married. So my, my my dad pretty much was in and out. Like he would come visit us and, you know, spend some time. But he wasn't living in our home um, much as a kid. They weren't seeing each other once I became about eight. So he was pretty much out of the house for a while. So no, growing up, they weren't both in the same house. No. And was it always like your desire to have like the opposite of that? The opposite? Like, like, like having both parents? Yeah. Consistent. Yeah, I, I definitely think I wanted that example. Um, mm -hmm. The only time I ever saw that example of man and woman living in the same house and being married was with my grandparents. Mm -hmm. So I really didn't know that 
like too much I would never forget one time I asked my mom like when they were still together like so is my dad your husband and she said no Mm -hmm. I'm like so like what is he and she said he's my boyfriend I'm like so you guys are friends like I didn't understand like even as a child I'm like that doesn't make sense like so you and my dad are just you know friends so it was just kind of just that confusion there Mm -hmm. but I definitely would say I do wish that I had that example of them being together you know and not separate did you always want to be like a homemaker based on like i don't want that to be the image for my child i don't want that confusion yes definitely and and that's another thing like my mom not not trying to go into too much detail of what Mm -hmm. their you know relationship was like but i definitely didn't look at them too much as an example so looking at them alone I saw where kind of the disconnect was and literally as a child this is no exaggeration or lie I said to myself that I was never going to do (laughs) do anything with a man before marriage because I didn't want a broken home because I could see the effects of what that could do even at that time so I literally made that decision as a child I'm not going to do that I'm going to make sure when I grow up I'm going to have a husband and have my kids you know so that we're all just one family unit and that be that Mm -hmm. so I think that is very important to note that Mm -hmm. you made that decision from earlier on to break that generation right right and that could not have been easy like those type of situations never easy to be the first one to say this is what I'm going to do. This is what I want for my life. This is what I'm going to project. And this is what I'm going to get, mm-hmm. you know? So what were you doing before you became a homemaker? Before I was a homemaker, I was a teacher. So I taught preschool for a while. And then I moved on to be in the middle school. So I was an autistic support teacher before I became a homemaker. And I did that for two years. Um, Yeah, so that was my goal. That's pretty much what I thought I was going to continue to do. But it was interesting because I kept saying, I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to go back to school because my BA is in English, but I didn't have education. So without that, I don't know if a lot of people know, but if you don't have any type of education degree, you're not really supposed to lead teach. So that's why when I was a pre-K teacher, that was fine. I didn't really need all that, depending on whatever the school was. But if you want to do something like teach English or teach another... um, certain subject you had to have that education background um so like I said I lacked in that so I always said I'm going back to school I'm going back to school to get that so I can teach my own classes now that I'm in middle school but it just never seemed to happen but now I understand pretty much why Mm -hmm. um so yeah it just went like that I was a teacher and then when I met my husband um he pretty much was on board for me to become a homemaker and that was I don't think I got a chance to say that before in addition to some of my thoughts when I was younger is that I did actually always want to be a homemaker because my main passion was writing. Education pretty much came in college. I didn't really see that one coming, but I knew that I always wanted to write. And I'm saying like, well, you know, you don't really have to have a job to be a writer. So I'm just Mm -hmm. going to be home, take care of my husband, take care of my kids and write books all day. So yeah, it just pretty much all came back like full circle with my number one dream was to do once I met my husband. (laughs) <laughs> and how did you meet him? I met my husband in 2018, August of 2018, at um, somewhere I was congregating at that time. And it pretty much was kind of, I don't want to say random, but he visited that church. He used to um, go to work with somebody that I was close with. Mm-hmm. Who, somebody, sorry, you're going to have to edit that. <laughs> somebody okay. who I'm friends with. Um, and... Um, yeah so they met and he pretty much was like yeah I think that you should talk to this guy not talk like romantically but like you should meet this guy because you guys have similar testimonies Mm -hmm. so he introduced us and we're pretty much just looking at each other like okay hi (laughs) it really wasn't yeah I'm like okay Um, (laughs) so we really didn't like have too much of a conversation at that time we met you know we got to know each other and that was pretty much that that day and he moved um, to um, he moved to State College for about a year, so we really had no connection. So it pretty much was we met, and I honestly didn't think that I was ever going to see this man again in my life. Mm-hmm. And uh, to be quite honest, and he knows this, so I'm not you know not trying to disrespect him or anything like that. But I really didn't like him or anything like that. Didn't really think that I you know he wasn't really my type. So I wasn't even looking oh. at him in that. <laughs> 
I really wasn't looking at them in that way, so I didn't think too much about them. So fast forward to the next year, he comes back to the place I was congregating in. And for some reason, I don't even know, must have been God prophesying or something like that, but I was really excited to see him. And so I gave him like this big hug and stuff. I was like, oh my God, hi. Da, da, da. And that, uh, just kind of making a long story short, mm -hmm. at the time I was making like these blogs online and he stumbled across it i must have gave him my online website somehow and he read them and he messaged me telling me about how much he liked them and stuff and he was very long-winded in the email so i'm like boy you're gonna have to take my number because y'all i don't even <laughs> i don't even know we're not about to do this via email so me and him started having conversations and you know getting to know each other a little bit better and then we had bible studies that we would do together so we became pretty close in a short amount of time. And then fast forwarding to 2020, I would say during the pandemic that brought us even more closer together. And out of nowhere, you know, us just being friends and still carrying on Bible studies, it turned into, you know, us, you know, looking at each other a different way. And, you know, God kind of brought it together, you know. Oh, and that's what it was. I love that. <laughs> yes. I love that story. And then he was on board with you becoming a homemaker. Mm -hmm. That is great. Mm -hmm. What do your like your what does that look like? Because a lot of people are looking like, okay, what does she do? Mm -hmm. You know, what does it look like to be a homemaker? So yeah, I, I definitely think that a lot of people do always question what homemakers actually do. And I get it all the time as a homemaker and with women who aspire to be a homemaker, they say, well, what, what does that look like, you know, for a day to day? For me personally, what that looks like is um, waking up early. I literally never change like my wake up time from when I was working. I still get up just as early as if I have a nine to five, you know, because I look at it as I'm I'm still working. Yeah. I still have a job to do, even though I'm not going outside. I don't have to drive anywhere. Um, there's still a lot to work, a lot of work to be done. So for me, you know, I get up. I like to cook dinner in the morning and cook breakfast in the morning, and you know, pretty much do all my meals at once so that I'm not cleaning my kitchen fifty thousand times a day. Yeah. And actually, in this season, it looks a little bit different. You know this, Yana, but I do babysit my nephew, so my schedule has kind of tweaked. Yeah. So what that would look like is um usually there's like a focus of a task that day so whether that be laundry or whether mm -hmm. that be me having to go out and run an errand for my husband you know taking clothes to the dry cleaner it's that but it's usually just um like i said focusing it on a certain task a day um i do deep cleaning once a week and you know yeah pretty much that and just organizing things looking looking at my home in that way that's pretty much what a day to day is looking like for me that's interesting because a lot of people think it's like just being at home, lounging around, you know, but it's an actual job. Yeah. It is like an actual nine to five. It like, really is. I've seen my mom being a homemaker and when she works seasonally, mm -hmm. so when it's like tourist season, she does go out. She's a nanny. Mm -hmm. So she does go out and I took over for her a couple of times when she went out and I can tell you it's a job mm -hmm. it's a whole job it's not just lounging around it's not just you know um just i'm a stay-at-home wife and you know my husband goes out and i just you know get the house ready mm -hmm. but it's it's like an actual job guys yeah. <laughs> and i also want to say this too because um a lot of a lot of people do have the opinion that you know, and, and they're entitled to it that it's it seems unnecessary for a woman to stay home. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even biblically, I believe that a woman's first ministry is always supposed to be home. So I have to look at it this way. If I was to work like a nine to five, me personally, the type of person, just the type of person I am, um, it's hard for me to focus on two things, you know what I'm saying? So say that I was still teaching, I feel like I would have a lot that I would have to impart into being a teacher mm -hmm. to where when I get home, I cook I cook a lot by scratch. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a task that, uh, that could not be done, you know, with somebody who's coming home at like, say, four o'clock, you know, and, and let's say I even wasn't. You know, just knowing that my husband is somebody who likes meals, you know, everyday breakfast, lunch, and dinner, that's going to be a lot to have to prepare when you're working, you know, and keeping a home organized all the time is a lot to do when you are 
working. So I feel that in my life, the way my family is in what, what me and my husband want for it, it's just better for me to have that primary focus on home. Mm. Mm. I get that. And what, what uh, parts of your duties are incorporated? Because we talk, like society, we talk a lot about the Proverbs 31 woman. And I feel like a lot of females feel pressure from all angles, being trying to be that Proverbs 31 woman and not knowing what it includes or not knowing how to interpret it. Mm -hmm. So what parts of your duties and responsibilities include um, that aspect of oh, my Proverbs 31 woman? Sure. So um, I definitely want to say that um, just as far as like the physical, um, the scripture me me mentions um, how she wakes up the while it's here at night. And that was something that I was always mindful of in that verse, and which is why I always made a point to make sure that I still was getting up early. You know, I know some people and hear some people um, that, you know, they stay home, but maybe they're not doing that. And I find that that's like a little less effective because like I said, there's so much that we still have to do. And if you're getting up at 10 a.m., you know, or, or 9 a.m., you know, you're kind of setting yourself back a little bit. Yeah. So I find that, you know, it, it's, it's a biblical thing to make sure that you're on, you're on task, you know, you're ready to go and you're not sleeping in too long. And yes, I have my days where I'm just a little bit tired, but I believe that it takes discipline to make sure I'm going to bed on, uh, on at a decent hour so that I'm going to wake up at a decent hour because I know I have to do so many things in my day. Um, and I'm not a mom yet, but like I said, I do um, babysit my nephew. And I feel like on the end where there are home homemakers that are more so um, stay-at-home moms or, or just moms that have children, it's important to make sure that you are not getting up to your child, you know, making sure that you are up before your home is up and preparing things before them so that it's not some, a child pulling on you saying I'm hungry or something like that and you have so many needs that you need to fulfill but you haven't gotten yourself together yet. You know, it's really important to have that time, not only to prepare for your home, but to even spend time with Jesus. So I pretty much take an hour. Like I said, I get up early and that, that time is 5 a.m. So I pretty much take a whole hour of making sure that I can cook as much as I can. And then once I hit the six o'clock time, that's my time of God. And I'm praying and I'm doing a quick devotional. I'm not, I don't always have time for that, depending on when my nephew does come, but most of the time I can at least read a couple of verses, but I definitely do make sure that I'm spending that time with God because it's needful for my home. It's needful for me to make sure that I'm meeting with him because it's also going to reflect in my attitude for the day. You know, it, it's a difference. You can, at least I can tell. I don't know if my husband ever can tell, but there is a difference when, I, when I'm not being as disciplined sometimes and having that time with God when I need to because I feel refreshed. I feel charged. I feel like I can take on the day and really know what God wants me to do in that day because I've spent that time with him. Um, and another thing that I feel like is important, I kind of alluded to it already, is just preparation. The scripture also says that she's not afraid of the snow. And I interpret that as meaning she's not afraid of the snow because she's a prepared woman. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So being a Proverbs 31 woman is making sure that you are prepared and not kind of scrambling around last minute and trying to get things together last minute because what's going to happen is it's not only going to affect you, but it's going to affect your husband. It's going to affect your children. It's going to affect those that are leaning on you to get things done in your home because, like I said, that's your responsibility, you know, and all of Proverbs 31, just to begin with, is a lot of what she is doing for her home alone. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's something that is very important when we're looking at what she's doing, is that it's definitely very centered and geared towards how can she look out for her household? You know, what is her attitude like? And like I said before as well, I spend that time with God because I really do need him to work on uh, me and work on my attitude and however I'm gonna treat those who I have to minister to that day in my house. Um, in her mouth, she speaks wisdom, she speaks a law of kindness. And I believe that that is also because she made sure that she was keeping that virtue with the Lord and letting it be on her with her quiet time with him. So I feel like those are the most important things for me of how I reflect it. And yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think that is, is a 
whole mouthful for them. <laughs> but it's definitely like very important because when you look at the fact that um, you know, being Christian and being a woman, it's important that you have that quiet time. Mm -hmm. It's important that you have that time with God. And if you were working, if you, you know, you had three or two children running around, you're working, it's kind of hard to find that quiet time. Right. And of course, we are making a broad layer here because I want all my girlies to understand that we are providing her perspective as a homemaker. Right. But everybody, you know, has a different perspective and has a different view of what, how to get there mm -hmm. and what to do to, to make themselves happy and also to fulfill their purpose with God. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's very important that you highlighted these facts because, you know, being a homemaker is something that is not very common these days. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, most people don't know what it includes. Um, so it, it's very enlightening to have that view and that aspect of things. And even going back to the Proverbs 31 woman, um, there is a lot to dissect, mm -hmm. but the main theme is that this woman is from God. Yes. This wife, it says, who who can who is he that findeth a good wife? For she is more precious than jewels. And it goes on to say that a good woman comes from God. And the basis of that whole chapter is talking about, you know, how this woman presented by the writer is from God and she wants secures food for her family which you talk about um, at length that this is what you do this is your routine this is how you do it you secure food for your husband because you know he likes to, to come home and eat some fresh goodies um, all from scratch and the the surprising thing when I read this is that she considers the fields and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a, a vineyard, which means that this woman engages in business. Mm -hmm. um, for a lot of people, being a homemaker is seen as, okay, you just take care of the home, but no, this woman also engages in, in business. She has the money, she handles it, she allocates it to the home, she knows how to do grocery shopping, and she knows how to, um, to conduct business and it says that her lamp does not go out at night which means that she completes her work both um, day and night and she is very diligent with it and which aligns with what you said she's very disciplined with it um, she opens her hand to the poor which means she's very giving and um, just looking at all of this on a whole and dissecting it uh, just providing a general view too as i said before that this is your perspective as a homemaker and i don't want anyone to feel pressured to say that um this is what i have to do but this has always been your dream your what you wanted for yourself and your family and your happiness mm -hmm. um and what you projected for your life um just to let everybody know that and you also mentioned that she's not afraid of the snow um which means she's prepared and she looks good and dressed good. And she's clothing fine linen. <laughs> and you know, she don't look too broken, which is Jamaican language for her. She don't look um, this sharp. Right. <laughs> and while you're there, I do want to touch on this point too. Uh, and I like that you read that verse because that's another um, common misconception and something that you know might see with some homemakers is that I think that some of us can think that because we're home, we don't have to put on, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But that's not necessarily true, you know, because of even just according to the scripture, she's put together, you know? And I think that I've seen where, you know, excuses are made, you know, I have so much to do, I have this to do, that to do, and again, I have my days, you know, but for the most part, I make it a point I have to get dressed. I have to get myself together, you know, because again, it's my job. And you don't, you're not going to show up to your job with your hair all disheveled and, you know, with your clothes all hanging 
hanging off or, you know, just, you know, sweatpants and a hoodie or something like that, you know, you want to make sure that you're ready, you know, because to, to go out, you know, to do whatever God has told you to do. And even if you don't go out, you know, you're prepared for if God will even send people to your home, you know, and you have to, at a, at a notice, just entertain or, um, have somebody sit down and you know you want to make sure that you're ready for that so I feel like that's an important piece to that too mm -hmm. is just making sure that we are we are in uniform and how that could reflect on us and how we take um, pride in what we do I think it's important too because um, I don't know what the term is here but a lot of men are concerned because when they get a wife mm -hmm. she lets herself go mm -hmm. we call it that. Yeah, let yourself go, let yourself yeah. go. Um, you know, dress up nice when you're dating him, but as soon as, you know, you caught the fish in the barrel, <laughs> you kind of let yourself go. And the Proverbs 31 woman, is, she still looks good. She dresses herself in fine linen and purple. That's a color of royalty. Yes. Um, she, she dresses really nice. So it's, it's not, it's not too late or it's not that if you're in a secure relationship or if you're in a secure marriage, now is the time to like let go of yourself, you know? Um, her husband is known in the gates, which means that her husband contributes to the household. He is a leader and she is like the support, the strong hand for him. Um, and here's, here's the thing too, she makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchants, which means that this woman is entrepreneurial. Yes. And as you say, you wanted to, to stay home and you want to become a writer, you want to focus on your writing. Mm -hmm. And this woman is is focusing on what she's good at. Yeah. So it's not being at home and just being the support of my husband, but it's also being um, focusing on what I'm passionate about yeah. and continuing to be passionate about those things. Mm -hmm. um, Strength and dignity are her clothing, which means that this woman has character. Mm -hmm. She is not fearful of the future. Yes. Um, she laughs at the time to come. And it comes back around. So the verse started out with him saying, who can find a virtuous woman? And this, you know, a good woman is from the Lord. And it really comes back around to say, um, she fears the Lord, gives the fruit her the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. So she does all these things. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Um, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And I feel like that, that whole thing is like, it's really important for us to realize that this woman not only is at home supporting her husband, doing her own passion, but she's praising the Lord. She is not fearful of the future. She has a whole lot of faith and she's a woman of character. Mm -hmm. She look good, she smell good, she's a woman of character. She is the entire package. Yes. And um, it's important that we got your side of things because it's not, it's not very common. Um, not something that we often see being discussed it's something often looked at as oh it's something in the past mm -hmm. this is not something that we we have happening in the present or this is reserved for a certain group of people and you know I can't access that life um, for me it it was something that I never imagined doing I so always thought it was like okay this is something that is for a certain class of people and just those people alone i think that growing up too um going back to how your parent is how you're partnered um growing up too and realizing my mom and dad work together and my dad you know he was the first male that taught me how to be ghosted you know like he he would be good a good dad one minute and then i would hear absolutely nothing from him for, for months or weeks and for me that meant that uh, instability was a, a part of my life and for my future I didn't want that I didn't envision that 
and I'm single guys so and Jay is married but I'm still in the process of like figuring things out like what do I want to do what do I what do I want my household to look like mm -hmm. and really getting myself to a place where I'm not making trauma informed decisions mm -hmm. based on like okay so all men leave and you know I have to prepare for the day he does that mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to get to that place where I can make those decisions but for all the girlies in my position and all the women who are trying to attain yours and for all the people whose situations look different at home whether it is that you're unable to become a housewife but this is something that you want um, you're unable to 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 see this life this is what the practical view of it looks like and I think a lot of times when we talk about being a homemaker they don't talk about the entrepreneurial part that you can mm -hmm. pursue your passions Absolutely. as well as support your husband Absolutely. And I feel that that is important, you know. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that because, um, you know, I actually I actually heard a or saw a YouTube video before of a woman talking about um, being a businesswoman versus being a homemaker, and she pretty much was kind of I would say talking down on homemakers mm -hmm. and saying that basically we how does she say like we we let go of, we we let go of what we could have in order to just be a homemaker. And she kind of was coming at an angle of we are missing out on what we could possibly have and we're being fearful and therefore taking on this position. And it's like, I, I don't necessarily think it's that, mm -hmm. you know, because there are, you know, I, I, like I said, I went to school for a certain thing. You know, I still do that certain thing just, you know, in a maybe a minuscule way, you know, and however God leads me to do it, but it's never something that's going to be lost, you know what I mean? And even if a woman had a desire to be a nurse, you know, she may not be in the hospitals or in a clinic, you know, but there are uh, times when as a homemaker, you have to put on that nurse's hat, you know what I mean? And somebody who maybe wanted to be a counselor, you still have to be a counselor in some ways to even your children and even maybe talking to your husband, maybe you, you're going to put on that role as a certain, in a certain way. And even now, um, I have some ideas of certain things that I want to pursue now. They kind of just came a little randomly, um, but you guys, you guys will see that in the future. Um, but um, I know that I can still be a homemaker and take on certain things that I'm, a pa I'm passionate about, and it just doesn't mean that you have to let go of things and just solely just be one thing. You know, God is so able to make you able to, you know, extend yourself in a way, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is important too because the whole idea of being a homemaker, people think that you let go of that, but it's mm -hmm. important as well to um, find a man who is okay with you pursuing your mm -hmm. passions mm -hmm. and who will also support the fact that you're not just his homemaker, but yes. you're also about to pursue your passions as well. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is a distinguishing factor that you know, a lot of people sometimes get wrong. Like you do have to find a husband who is not only okay with you being a homemaker, but is okay with you pursuing your passions while you're at it. Mm -hmm. um, and understanding you as a person and as an individual, because that can sometimes be lost, mm -hmm. you know? So it's for, for this is, I feel is a lot of good information for people don't know what's what it's about and um, never thought it possible to do it mm -hmm. and now you're realizing well it's not just you know being at home and cooking and cleaning it's so much more than that mm -hmm. yeah so for me this was a eye-opening conversation so we are joined by a man that <laughs> that has allowed uh, one of our favorite jades <laughs> to pursue her passions and be a homemaker at the same time so alex we really want to know the guy's view and the guy's deeds on it how did you feel when she told you like hey i would like to be a homemaker um i guess it wasn't that she told me I, we were having a conversation and i told her <laughs> i always wanted my wife to mm -hmm. be a homemaker um, ideally, right? So it's a couple of different ways that it could look. 
um, specifically when I was speaking about when we had children, like I would definitely want my wife to be at home to be the primary caretaker of our children. Mm -hmm. Um, I said that when, you know, before we had children, you know, I, I think that it would be fine if, you know, if she wanted to work or didn't want to work. It, I I don't think it would bother me either way, but I but I but my emphasis was really on, okay, when we have children, I definitely want you to stay home. Mm. And that's important to know because we talk a lot about high value men and what they want and what they need. And now we have an actual high value man. And, you know, it's good to have that conversation from a male's point of view and seeing that this is what you wanted and you worked all your life to to try to support that. Oh, yes. So I'd say definitely the way that I see it is that when you're getting married, right, Mm -hmm. you're making preparations for a lot of different things. You're, you know, you want to be spiritually well and you want to be like, you know, just an overall good person. But one of the things that like I also wanted to be, I wanted to make sure that I was financially prepared Mm -hmm. to, you know, take on those responsibilities because I, I always wanted to make sure that my wife even had the option to, you know, sometimes people get into situations where maybe they are married and you know they say okay well financially I can't afford for you to stay at home well my whole thing was well, before mm-hmm. I even get married I want to make a certain income so that my wife has that option so that she doesn't have to feel the burden of, of the financial weight um, on her mm, and that is an um, important distinction because there are a lot of guys out there who want to have like a homemaker as a wife but it's important that you be financially prepared son like (laughs) in order to be able to sustain that um, homemaker a woman who pursues her passion she's able to stay at home and raise the kids you have to be financially prepared to sustain that and for the girls looking for men you also have to find somebody if you want to be a homemaker like you have to find somebody who is financially prepared to sustain that and very so often you know we want all these things but what is the preparation and what does that look like and so often we fail to, 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 to actually plan and prepare for, you know, what are the characteristics I need to, to, to see in a man to get where this needs to be. Um, what are some advantages that you like about the fact that your wife is a homemaker? Um, so there's a lot of advantages. Um, I can, so one thing is, is that you, I can, always 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 count on jade praying for me Mm -hmm. at a certain point in the day like i don't have to worry about oh is somebody covering me in prayer because i know that at some point in this day she's going to do that and not saying that other women don't cover their husbands in prayer Mm -hmm. but i know that the day gets away from us right and so sometimes we have these times where we say okay let me say a prayer because I just haven't prayed all day but because she is intentional about setting aside hey this is you know an hour and a half whatever of my day is dedicated to prayer and then you know she may have other prayers throughout the day but this is my dedicated prayer time I know that when if I'm out in the world or wherever whatever I'm doing I know that I'm covered you know, in that prayer. And and, I mean, yes, I pray for myself, but there's a different type of uh, covering that your wife can give you when she's out there praying, because you got to realize that, you know, uh, God has equipped women with specific talents, right? Mm -hmm. And they can be nurturing and they can Men can be nurturing and caring too, guys. (laughs) But, you know, women have a gift right to be nurturing to be caring and you know god speaks to them to say to to women the same way that god speaks to men right and so there may be things that's going on with me that maybe jade isn't going to just say to me like 
hey, you know, this is going wrong. No, she's going to take it to God in prayer. God's going to deal with me about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes I don't even know that Jade even prayed about it. You know, and these are things that I do believe that I benefit from. Um, Again, women pray for their husbands all the time. But I think that being able to kind of focus on that every day, as opposed to when you wake up in the morning, you got to go to work. Okay, you're focusing on getting dressed, trying to get in the car. Now the day is getting hectic. Now you're coming back home. You're worried about dinner and everything, but she can set aside that time. I think another benefit is that, you know, <laughs> the food thing. Yeah, <laughs> like, um, man's love is food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> the so, way to a man's heart is through <laughs> stomach. <laughs> right. So, like, when I want to eat something, right, I know that Jade is able to prepare it. So, mm-hmm. even if it's something that may seem like, really extravagant she for the most part has the time to prepare it she has the time to make things from scratch where other people may not have that time and so she has the time to make us fresh bread which ultimately turns into less money spent on our food budget because if she's baking everything from scratch you know we buy a big 20 pounds of flour from Costco mm-hmm. and then she makes bread and tortillas and Ooh. bagels and pretzels <laughs> any sort of you know baked good that you can think of bread product she makes it from scratch well that's going to be a lot cheaper than us buying all of those things individually mm-hmm. and then you know potentially some of it going bad or what have you so I think that you know financially it helps and also just it's good it tastes good (laughs) um and then third i'll say she does provide a lot of um support in the household and just it you know when i need something you know she is there to help me when i need it you know it i don't have to worry about you know oh she's out of here she's gone somewhere else and then i have to figure okay well what's going on with this or what's going on with that. Jade knows. Jade knows everything about our schedule. She knows all of this stuff. So she has all this readily available. So I think that those are some things that's helpful. Oh, Uh, uh, here's a burning question I want to ask. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) You know, she's a homemaker Mm -hmm. and you are the one that bring the finance in. Mm -hmm. Do you value her opinion? as like an individual as a person like if you guys had um some issue with the household or um say you guys are have kids uh you wanted to put them in a certain school he wants to put them in another do you value her opinion 100 percent um again you know if we go back to genesis right god gave eve to adam as a help me right so it Mm -hmm. would be very Uh, foolish of me not to take the counsel of my wife Mm, I think that's important because I feel like um, the struggle is the power dynamic with a lot of women like you feel as if you become a homemaker you've given up your power and you know it's important also that we not only get a man that's financially stable but somebody that values our opinion and also allows us to pursue our passion. We're coming up with a nice little list here, girlies. <laughs> <laughs> so we are we're figuring out and we're finding out. Well, I'm figuring it out. Um, <laughs> but it was definitely nice to see this this side of things and um, being exposed and experienced to something that you know the world doesn't consider as important but it actually is uh to both of you now what is the most important thing of having your house so situated like this with you being the provider and you being a homemaker what is the absolute most important thing for for both of you the most important thing is having god in the center of your marriage and therefore of your family right because when you have God leading you because again I'm a human being right I make mistakes I may not always do things correctly but if I'm following God right like he will order my steps accordingly 
And so I think that as long as you, you know, keep it God focused, keep your marriage God centered, right? Like you may make mistakes, but he can redirect you and get you back on the right path. So anything you might be, you know, if I'm messing up as a husband, God has a solution for it. It is somewhere in the Bible. Okay. <laughs> um, there, you know, he gives, he gives men lessons on how to be um, good husbands. What does the Bible say? Husbands love your wife if Christ loves the church. Right. So mm-hmm. if I'm using that as an example about how I should love my wife and how I should run my family, then I mean, you, you can't go wrong. Mm. Well, he stole my answer. Um, <laughs> that I was to become one. They think yeah. alike. You had the option to go first. <laughs> I did. But I would definitely say that that is true, that God is definitely the number one thing. But I would just give my um, perspective on it, that when God is, we know that we both have that mindset that God must be the center. It's not negotiable. Um, I can trust that my husband is praying, right, Um, and in allowing God to lead him in the things. And because I'm not the the breadwinner of the home and I'm not in charge of the finance in in, in, in any sort of way, uh, it takes me having to trust that my husband is not going to spend money on stupid things, you know, and let our family suffer because of it. And I can trust that he's paying his tithing. He's giving his offering. He's giving to whoever is in need because he's allowing God to lead him in those things. That That is important to me, you know, because I'm trusting in him to make sure that he is um, on the on the same um on the same time what am i trying to say <laughs> on, the, on the path of um where god wants him to be and vice versa i know that he knows that um because he said it even that i'm prayerful and that anything that i'm going to do even around the house um it's going to be god led and i think that sometimes we don't always think about that and how important that is because you know I don't know if a lot of people know some of your viewers but homemaking is just trending on Instagram now and I think Ooh. that it's definitely very and I hate it so much I'm <laughs> I'm about to get off Instagram as a homemaker because it's just it, it just annoys me because I can see that we kind of water it down and make it about the things and less about God and mm-hmm. less and less about how important it is that what we're doing is a serious ministry you know and we have to be God led we can't let it about let it be about how things look on the outside you know and I think that what we should be presenting is so much of you know how can we be led of God you know so that that's pretty much my take on it Mm. I love that I love that that God was like you guys first answer because here is the thing without God in your marriage or your relationship it completely falls apart um, it does not work, especially in that situation where you have to have complete trust in your husband, who who also in turn has to have complete trust in God. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's how this all comes together. You have to have complete trust in God to have complete trust in yourself. And you also have to have complete trust um, in your husband who is trusting God a whole big circle (laughs) merry go round (laughs) is there any final thoughts or nugget you want to drop or anything final you guys want to say um to those girlies and um men who want to become uh what do i say no girlies who want to become homemakers and men who want to to find wives who are homemakers or homemakers in making (laughs) So what I would have to say to any woman considering this is, again, it all always goes back to Jesus. You have to make sure that you understand the biblical principles about being a homemaker because it is in his word. Um, so, you know, study Proverbs 31, study Titus, the uh, second chapter, verse three to five, study those things and see why that is so important. And it, it's in other places as well. But um, look it up, look it up on Google. What does the Bible say about being a homemaker and make sure that that is your reasoning and not the fact that it's so trending right now. And so, oh, I'm at home doing this, that, and the third. Absolutely not. What does God want you to do? and how can he be glorified by you doing it mm. um, so for me I would say you know guys 
you know, if you're looking for a wife and you are looking for her to stay at home and, you know, you want her to be a Proverbs 31 woman, you have to be a man of God first. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) You know, you can't have such high expectations of her and so such low expectations of yourself. You know, you are going to be the tone setter of your household. So, yes, you, you know, everybody thinks, oh, you're the, you're you going, you know, you tell her what to do and all that. No, first off, I don't. But <laughs> uh, also, you have to realize that being a leader means that you have to lead by example. You know, if you want to see, you know, Bible study in your house, you have to initiate Bible study in your house. If you want to see, um, you know, more prayer time in your house, you have to initiate more prayer time in your house. There's other responsibilities that come along with it. And you can't just expect that, okay, well, because I was born a man, I can now have a wife that stays at home. It doesn't really work that way. Mm-hmm. You, you have to be ready to lead. And that leading, right, the way that you learn how to lead is from God. So yeah, Mm. bringing that back full circle. (laughs) Bringing it back full circle, guys. (laughs) (laughs) But I've loved having this conversation with both um, Jade and very unplanned, but Alex stepped in. I was like, I really needed the male perspective on this. (laughs) (laughs) And I know you guys did too. So thanks for coming. Thanks for joining us. And y'all, thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Click that notification bell so you can be notified when we, when we upload another video. We thank Jade and Alex for coming in and talking to us about the Proverbs 31 woman, what that means to you as a homemaker, and Alex giving us your version of what it means to be seeking a Proverbs 31 woman as well, and to have had a Proverbs 31 woman. Um, and we thank you guys so much for listening once again. Uh, thank you for joining. We will be here same time, same place next week, Thursday at 8. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.